I was checking my clothes. <laughs> oh, well, oh no, it's recording now. <laughs> it's recording. <laughs> okay. So the thing is because the interface is split, just a reminder, it's split between those two sections. Um, dab, 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 dab. It's split be between those two sections. So I thought we go with two API endpoints. It also has the benefit that we could ask, uh, use the summary endpoint to, uh, to find out if we even need to do the other request, you know, um, because we have to somehow detect the empty state. So what I just would do, and I think the summary is not the most controversial, it would just be asking for the summary of a group. So I just named it security dashboard. This is obviously, um, I have already pasted the links. This is obviously, we can change it. Doesn't need to be named security dashboard, but then it just returns a JSON object, which has a total integer. And then it's uh, by severity and by type. Um, okay. And yeah. I mean, if it would be in a public API, it could be under the group, you know, that it maybe is like a group and then, I don't know, um, whatever. So I don't want to bother with the name, but uh, I think the uh, what we can send and what we receive is more important. And this endpoint is, uh, endpoint, sorry, this uh, endpoint is the borrowing one. Um, and I think it makes more sense to uh, talk about the other one. As I said, um, the endpoint name here is uh, um, a bit unclear. Um, I was thinking about a simple get request with query parameters, but then I thought that maybe not the best idea. Maybe we should implement it as a post endpoint because once we add um, searching for vulnerabilities and they end up in server logs, if you search for certain CVEs, it might not be the best idea. Um, maybe we should put it in a post body uh, because if there are some, there's a new CVE and you see all the people searching in the public API and it turns up in logs, uh, may not be the best idea. Just, yeah. And then basically because of the, um, because of the parameters um, we defined right here right now, which um, with which we can filter, it will be the type the severity, the project, and the confidence. Um, I mean, at the moment, we didn't just have SAS as type, but I think we should be uh, future compatible. So um, at the, in the first iteration, it will make no difference if you filter by type or uh, not. You could also rename it to report type, I don't care. Um, these are the other ones. And then obviously we have uh, pagination. Um, and I think you can just reuse the normal pagination stuff we have. Uh, it actually then adds headers and whatnot with all the pagination. Um, and as a result, it would be a JSON array and a JSON array of objects. Um, so I just called them vulnerability from the type of vulnerability. And uh, vulnerability uh, will be um, basically the name the thing we display as the name, um, the type again, uh, severity, confidence, whether the thing is dismissed or not, then the body, and maybe we should rename it body. Body would be the JSON blob we have in a database. I don't know if there's a better name for it. And then I would like to add a project object because in the front end we have no information uh, about the project ID, namespace, web URL, the vulnerability feedback URL, the issues URL, if you want to file issues, and metadata is maybe good. Um, yes. Um, so I think these are all the things you store in a database. Of course, if there are more fields, just expose them here as well. We may use them in the future. Um, and otherwise, um, yeah. So Olivier, you added category or to be discussed in the front end back out, we always call it report type or we can um, change the wording for the front end. Yeah. It's not an issue. But I it's, mean, it's it for the public API, we should have a standardized name. 
Yeah. And actually, I don't care about the names of the fields. It's just like all the fields should be there. <laughs> and I mean, that's the, and probably the thing we would forget is that we need a project object with the, because I looked again and the vulnerability feedback URL is based on the project. So we should have a project object and have the ID in there and everything uh, we need to link something. What I just missed from this is basically if we have a go-to vulnerability link, we, I think we didn't define one yesterday in the call, um, but if we would have something like jump to the vulnerability and it would jump into the security screen of the pipeline or wherever, um, or in the first commit where it was introduced or wherever it jumps, we would need that URL as well. Um, yes. Um, any questions, any comments? Yeah, you, you're missing also uh, information about uh, feedback because you want to know if it's dismissed. So you have the Boolean, right? But you need also to know who dismissed that, ah. which pipeline is it, and eventually if it has uh, created, created issues, uh, what's uh, the number of these issues to, to generate the link? Oh, I don't remember if it just bring, give you the link already. So yeah, you have... I don't have the, all the properties in mind, but uh, you may look at uh, the, the feedbacks that we already are fetching in the front end. And yeah. We are integra integrating, uh, I think it's a dismissal sub-object in the current uh, vulnerability object. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good. I didn't look at the API result. Uh, so basically what we need, we would need the result of the vulnerability feedback API also just in there. I'm not sure about the, the body property. Uh, the goal was to provide a clean API uh, to do this, the, the, the parsing and the, the marshalling and the JSON uh, on the backend side. So it's three ton, totally transparent for the front end. This means the, problem we, is, the problem is we need the body, otherwise we can't display the model. And because the, the model, yeah, I mean, is, the information, the information you have in the model will be provided as uh, first citizen properties on the vulnerability object. So if you want uh, to reuse the model with the, the current code, you eventually will have to rebuild a, a small, uh, and in, the, in the mutation, uh, in the mutation method, you, you will have to uh, do a small mapping. But if we want to provide a clean API right now, we have to get, we have to get rid of this JSON object because it, will, it may change between different versions of the reports, and we want to avoid to expose this different version. We will uh, normalize that on the backend side and always provide you uh, a, a common API on, on the front end. So, do, do you think it will be feasible for the uh, MVC? Because yeah. then we also have to write more front end code to deal with your standardized things. <laughs> And it's, already, it's already well standardized. If you look okay. at the, the, the utils, uh, the GS file, I already changed a lot of uh, the code to make them really compatible with the, the common report format we have, uh, which is the one is used by SAST. So if you look at uh, parse SAST and parse dependencies, there is already backward compatibility uh, uh, stuff and stuff like that. So I may be wrong, but to me, the only thing we have to do is eventually do a small mapping between the, the, the property you will have in this vulnerability object with the name that we are using in the, in the store for the model. In a, well, in the, so. But is there, I mean, you work now on Zast. Uh, the problem is what I, what I personally really don't like is if you have a flat list of flat objects and those objects are of different types. I mean, inheritance, right? So what I actually, what I like more is if you have a type property and you, if you ever have to do something differently because of the type or category or what's not, I like to have all the properties that belong to the category in a sub object. It's just personal thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I understand that's, uh, this is exactly how, what we did in, in gymnasium actually to all the different uh, kind of yeah. dependencies. And uh, we maybe could go that way and add the, an extra property with some uh, uh, type specific uh, properties. But the thing is that everything you want to display in a common way 
should be in the in the top level. Okay, well, because the, all the things in the model, as far as I remember the front end code correctly, we basically just iterate over the object and show you every field we have a definition for, basically. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, maybe it makes sense, you know, at some, I don't know, um, we could throw everything in here flat, but there's always, the pr there could be a problem with conflicts or something, I don't know, uh, in the future. And if we put it in the in the flat up in the top level uh, from the in the API, it means that we are able to normalize that on the on the okay. Otherwise, yeah. it has to be if it's I mean if it's the same property name but the value is totally different. I don't know. Sometimes you just yeah. have a string and sometimes you have an object. We we won't do that in the same property. It doesn't make sense. So for such really uh, like you know for um, for DAS you have uh, instances which is a sub array. That contain uh, a subobject, yeah. And this is clearly uh, only for DAS. So we could have the, this conversation to decide whether we just put it on the on the top level, and for type of vulnerabilities that don't have it, we just don't have the property, or it's an empty array. So you have a really common behavior for all kind of vulnerabilities, or we can go for more typed objects so that you can have a more typed. Uh, front-end handling, and we can also leverage your specificity to have specific components that will uh, leverage those properties. We I already mean, have those um, for uh, some, some things. And um, the question also is, we yesterday talked about making the information public. And in my opinion, if someone wants to build something on the public API for them, the raw data will be beneficial. I mean, it's okay to have like, standardized things but i think we can all agree that those standardized things will always be less than all the other information we have right and so i don't know uh, be, be, because everything else on the public api is uh, properly defined i don't know how we would handle i mean you know um things that are not standardized or that could change and Maybe that's the reason why I wanted to also to have it in a different field. And yeah, I see your point, but this is our goal to unify all those reports and provide a common API. This is exactly what we are doing. We're integrating different tools and we have to normalize the data to have a common one. And uh, the, um, uh, sorry, I missed my idea. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. I can the, the, JSON, the, JSON object, the JSON object that we currently have should be removed. This is a temporary thing that we have that there is a raw JSON in the database, but we want to get rid of that. So in the, in the end, we won't have it. Even well, if we normally... Olivier? Olivier? Yeah. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, when you say we, uh, do you include me? <laughs> because I actually, I'm, I actually I'm, I'm not sure I agree with you. Um, no, we is like uh, GitLab backend back maintainers and database maintainers. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, so everyone except it, Fabio. It, it, well, it's, no, I mean, I, I like the intern, but um, yeah. the thing is, as Vika said, it's, if you want to normalize everything, it's going to be less than the specific um, uh, data we can get from one specific analyzer. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, I wanted to go back to a previous point. So, Olivier, from what I understand, you want to standardize the output right away and get rid of this body slash metadata um, field right from the beginning. And yeah, we are writing. Yeah, okay, we are writing the the JSON, uh, the the grape entities that we generate JSON from. A Ruby class, so yeah. I, I just want, really yeah. I just want to make sure that there is no extra cost in doing that, because the um, the intent when um, suggesting this uh, body or metadata field or column actually in the database was to make um, the transition easier, since we already have all the code um, in the front end to load the, the, that piece of information automatically uh, in the model without. So yeah, the intent was to to make sure that we would, there would be no need to change the front end. Uh, 
at least at the beginning. The, the thing is that we are doing that, we will be doing that for artifact parsing. For match request and pipeline view, we don't leverage the database, but we want to have a backend parsing. So if we do that, we don't have any choice to just pass through the JSON to the front end until the front end is rewritten for those sections. But today we are working on the group dashboard, which is a brand new uh, page made well, by the- that, that's my point. I, I, I was hoping that we would reuse most of the code uh, in the front end and not cre um, create, write new code. Um, yeah, yeah, we will. We will, but this is, this is just because of that, that we don't want to rely on the, on the JSON, on the raw JSON, because if we just use the raw JSON right now, we will have to rewrite, to rewrite later the front end to use a normalized output. I actually, I don't want to rely on the, I, I don't want to re rely, I mean, we have to rewrite it anyway, because at the moment we rely on it in the merge request and pull request and all the other pages, right? And those should be using the, um, the generalized uh, things as well. And I see that we have fields or values we can generalize, but we also will have and always will have um, fields that are specific to each different type of scanning. I mean, I have dependency, dependency scanning and I have information in there which dependency or whatnot. Um, and that's maybe different from, uh, you know, in Java apps from the class or, uh, be, yeah, I mean, that's also a good example. If you have a code project that has uh, JavaScript and has Java code, it will have things like classes on the one hand and it uh, will have other um, results that don't have classes. So I don't know. I mean, in the, in the new stuff we built here in the front end, I just want to rely on the, on the information the API has on a top level. But for, the, for these um, models, for example, or for these, uh, um, for, for, yeah, for these models, for example, I, I, it's okay to rely on the JSON blob we have. And maybe you can later on, uh, you can also start, normalizing the things we have in the JSON blob, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's my point. Yeah, I, I want to to postpone that work. Uh, okay. That, for me, the idea is to rely on what we've got right now in the front end. So if there's a way, and it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be part of what's returned by this specific endpoint, actually. Uh, um, I'll talk about that later. But yeah, the idea was to reuse most of the existing code. So if the data is the same, I guess the front end code is the same. The model and the, the JavaScript code you rely yeah. on. But you have to understand that the model is not filled with raw JSON from the reports. It's not working like that today. What we do is that we are parsing the raw report yeah. and we are already stripping and normalizing the data and then we feed it to the model. And I, I worked on this front end part and I made things really close to what is the, what is the, the common format right now. So, okay, we, we can go this way, but I mean, it will be a waste of time because we are really so close to the final results that it will be just a few adjustments to map this vulnerability, this new vulnerability object to what we need to feed to the model store. But if you want to go the I'm other way. To, I mean, could, could we just uh, uh, postpone this? I mean, uh, why? I mean, all the rest is clear, right? Uh, so that's actually the one discussion point we have. Uh, yeah, just, just one other thing. Um, um, and maybe it's uh, complementary to what you just said. Uh, what about returning the body of the raw data um, using a different endpoint? So we would query that specific vulnerability and we would get the raw data. Will be really, really annoying. Uh, I mean, yeah. we don't do that right now. So we have to write more code to, for the querying. I, I, it's fine because if you open the model, you query for it. Um, um, but, but will mean more adjustments and maybe not MVC. Um, because at the moment, but, yeah. at the moment you don't have the, you also don't have like, 
an endpoint available where you have the artifact for a specific vulnerability, right? Would also mean that you have to build an additional backend endpoint instead of just taking the, the JSON field in there. Um, yeah. Probably, yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, but at the same time, we would, we would be able to say that this particular endpoint, I mean, the, the, the search endpoint and the list it returns is already stable. Yeah. And then the other endpoint would be alpha or experimental, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I would I ask uh, if, you are, uh, if you agree with that, because is, can you please, uh, I will give you the vulnerability object to all the field that we want at the top level. And you could have a look at what we have in the model store. And so that you can see what would be the work to adapt what you have in this new object to uh, fill the model. And if you say that it's too much work and you want to rely on the Rogizon, we will find which way we are going to integrate the Rogizon. Do you agree with that? Mm, yeah. That sounds good. Um, I'm because, just... because to me, you, you are expecting too much work to adapt the existing model to this new vulnerability object that, to me, is required. But I may be wrong. <laughs> um... Because every, every uh, property is, is just an array of data that we are looping on. And if we have it, we just pay yeah, it. I know. And if we don't I have it, have... we just skip it. Yeah. So, but the problem to me is I, because we are talking about the clean API and I thought it may be more useful to put all that stuff in a different object because right we now can. I'm looking, I, right now I'm looking in the, in the source code and we have subscription identifiers, file, class name, method name, namespace, severity, confidence, solution, links, and instances. These are the fields we show in the model and I think we show additional stuff if it's dismissed and everything. And I don't know if we want to put all that stuff in the top level object. Uh, to me, this is a total different discussion. Okay. Because even if we put them on top level or in a sub object, if it's a specific properties, yeah. it will be the same work to map this to the, the existing model store. It's just a matter of, Okay, I want this property. I just go find it in that sub object instead of this top level property. So to me, it's just a, uh, just a quick mapping. It's really easy to work. But if you want to discuss uh, if, we were, if we have to put specific properties into a sub object, I'm fine with that. The, the issue is we didn't have done right now uh, enough research on the other kind of reports. So it's really clear to me what we are for SAST, what we are for dependency scanning, because we already work on which beta data we have there. But we didn't do that work for container scanning and uh, DAST. So it's not that complicated, but it will require maybe one day or two to really focus on that task and decide whether or not we have too many specific uh, properties and we want to put them into an extra sub-object. If we want to aggregate everything uh, to to put everything on, on the flat uh, on the flat object at the top level, yeah, I, I, I won't be able to to decide right now. To me, based on what I've worked uh, and based on the work I've done on the metadata, to me we can have just flat objects. But as you say, it could be better sometimes to have typed component on the front end and leverage just different things using an extra object or even for readability. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's yeah, a really I'm, dedicated sorry. discussion. Yeah, so, so I don't see the need to push for, uh, for um, flat objects. Like, we're not sure. It's just safer to put um, what's, you know, what depends on the category in a, in a sub object. So why not? The thing is that at some point we may want to leverage. Um, well, we'll see then. Yeah, we, we could backport it then. Yeah. 
My question, uh, I still have a question regarding, um, I see if we were still using a lot of things in the front end, like creating a project fingerprint, for example, <laughs> or why is it named project fingerprint? Uh, that's the question because I think it's used for the dismissal. Yeah, um, but it's scoped to the project. It's a fingerprint of the vulnerability within that particular project. Really? Because I just see the fingerprint is doing a SHA-1 in charge of the CVE. Okay. Um, CVE that's a shortcut. CVE. Yeah. So my, my question would be, in this iteration, we would still do the things in the front end? No. Uh, you, I will so give you already you the... start calculating those fields? Yeah. Cool. This, well, will, this will be a deprecated field that you will have in the, this object because for backward compatibility with the dismiss uh, and create issue feedback feature. But it's really not reliable and we will remove it at some point. So we would have, uh, instead of dismiss, yes, no, we would have the, um, that's a question, dismiss Boolean, maybe we can keep it. Uh, I don't know, isn't that easier to just have uh, a feedback object and check on existence on this? Or yeah, it could depend. I mean... Uh, because you, you're not supposed to have a feedback. I mean, it's not a mandatory property. Yeah, I mean, then we just say string bad optional there. Uh, it would be an know. object, actually. The feedback, right. the, the whole feedback is in the sub object because you have to know if it's a feedback of type issue, you will have the issue number and you will have uh, the author. And if it's a, um, a dismissed feedback, you will just have the author. And I think there's a pipeline too. <sighs> Vulnerability feedback. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. So it will be the whole object yes. and it had a, has a, a feedback type. So it will be, the feedback object. Okay, so we just say feedback, and it's a feedback object. Yep. And uh, optional object or null or undefined. Um, yeah. Yep. I don't. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, you have to look how the backend does it. If it's null or undefined. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how we work uh, in the API in general. Do we have? Yeah, we set null values. So probably it's better to put a null value in there. Ah, paste uh, formatting command shift. Okay, right. Yep. Um. Surprised that Olivier didn't mention uh, GraphQL yet. Don't push me. <laughs> yeah, you can mention it all you want. We don't have the proper support on the front end yet. So, <laughs> um, Good yes. Um, okay. Um, so, type or category? I can go with both. I don't care. Uh, the last suggestion we had uh, was analyze this type because type is really too um, generic. Old, too generic, yeah. So analyze this type uh, is what we ended up with, but today what's, what's, all the code is using category. So <laughs> what's uh, what's with report type because analyze the type is to analysis. Like analysis. Analysis, yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is also confusing to me because we have multiple analyzers for SAST, for example. Yeah, that, that's what I it wanted to Analyze this and that analyzer, a tip that type of analysis. Uh, do we want to go with the boring way and just call it report? Because no one yeah. can pronounce analysis. And <laughs> also you saw I, it. Took uh, report me. type is really fine for yeah. me. Yeah. I, I would report say it depends if it's in the model or the model. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I recommend not to use analyze or analysis because it can be spelled different ways depending on, you know, <laughs> US versus UK. Yeah, okay. Um, I also adjusted it in the top. Do we need anything more 
in the uh, in the as the query parameters right now not right because we don't have more searches at the moment uh, severity okay you give it a string no problem we were doing the mapping on the on the back end uh, project ID oh, okay we don't have the the identifier for this first situation right uh, and I mean, if we want to move those things into the body, if you have like a post endpoint, we still could use the page for, I don't know, I don't care where it is then, if the page is a query parameter or in the body. Yeah, we will, I would check what we have already for other existing endpoints and what's the, the yeah. nice way to do it on backend. Where, where do you get the project ID, by the way? Do you know <laughs> I am. Um, it will be if a different we filter, we, ah, that's, that's a good question. So probably if we have the project filter, we will need to use in the drop down. we need to use an existing project filtering thing. I think we still already have that. If I go in a merge request and I can filter by, can, nope. can I filter by project or something? Yeah, but in this case, we're at the group level, so. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's but be... our but our um, like group drop down. I don't know what do we have here. We can go to groups, GitLab org. Maybe we have an issue board here or something. And I think we already have front end code for that. So is there like a project? Huh? You can filter wow. by project. <laughs> yeah, select project to create. See to create all... an issue. Yes. Oh yes, yeah. you have to list here. Yeah, yeah. So. And that, that list will hopefully give us the proj project ID. Good. Should make sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope we have a component for that. Other, maybe we have to throw, um, put that filter. I mean, it's good if we have the filter in the ABI and if that drop down takes too long, we can uh, maybe move it out of the MVC. We'd still have to check that. I'm going to write down that question. I mean, the, the, nice thi the nice thing about the severity and confidence, they will be fixed values, right? Yeah. Um, they are fixed value, but they are not always meaningful for both, get, for both properties. Yeah. So if you Project. want to use static values there, maybe we have to refine that. Because to, currently, to make it simple, we have the same values for both filters, but like... Uh, I don't know, ignore, ignore level for uh, confidence doesn't make sense for severity. Yeah, I mean, drop two drop downs with uh, five values, I think I can handle that. Um, the other <laughs> question would be with unknown. Do you have severity unknown or is unknown basically an alias for null or undefined? Yeah, good question. Because that's the problem, because once you send starting query parameters with null or undefined in a, in a query, it ugh, gets ugly. So I don't know, uh, in the database, are you mapping unknown severity to a different part of the enum, or uh, is it just empty? Uh, these fields are not mandatory, so they are just mapped to new value if they are not provided. Okay. So then would, the question would be, should we be able to search for issues without those values? And I don't know if, if it brings to, uh, enough value for the users to, to uh, bring those features. This is why we don't have those levels on the top level uh, cards with the, the, the counters. Yeah. We don't have them there because it doesn't bring any value. So uh, we have it here, unknown. Yeah, we have a none, but we don't have ignore. We don't have experimental, which are also existing lovers. Ah, okay. So uh, I'm not sure, 100% sure of. I mean, we have this feature. We basically have the feature f to search for, how do we do it here? I search for unassigned. Oh, that's stupid. I'm searching the whole instance. <laughs> Maybe I say <laughs> Ah, and they basically just send a null. No, unassigned, yeah, ID equals zero. Um, okay.
Yeah, I don't know if we if we needed in a drop down. That's maybe Philippe, you have an opinion on that? Okay, yeah. So uh, sorry, I just checked uh, the, the 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 reports code and this is it. this is exactly that. If the report tool doesn't is an analyzer doesn't report uh, the confidence or the severity, it would just be uh, an empty value, so a null or nil or any yeah. find. But should we able to search for it from the front end? Leave that apart for at least for the MVC. Yeah, I don't. If we have some feedback that we can charge for, I mean, okay. If if I put myself in the shoes of a user, I will want to tackle all the the highest severity and highest confidence issues first. That's the point of using the dashboard. So I won't go into really all the details right now. Okay. Not for the MVC, I wrote it down. Yeah, yeah. But th this is a real issue because under the hood, we have some analyzers that doesn't provide the severity, but it doesn't mean that those vulnerabilities aren't severe ones. You know what I, I mean? mean that's, I mean, that's also, yeah. But yeah. the user can judge, can tell because we don't have that value. So truly, we can solve that. So let's just yeah. forget it. Okay. Um, so I think we can cut. We should cut. We we have yeah. basically no. uh, fifteen days to to do that. So okay, I I wrote it down here. I will. Um, so any open things? Uh, you removed unknown from the yeah, yeah from, from the, the from the query list as a parameter. And, and here it will be null or undefined, right? Uh, no, you can have all the values there. You will have critical, high, medium, low, experimental, unknown, ignore. You have experimental. Uh, experimental, experimental is before known in terms of uh, priority. I, I, I don't really wonder the, the value of this. Variety, but anyway, this is something we didn't have time to discuss, but we have okay, issues. Which, which is the last mapping. one? Uh, last one is ignore. Ignore? Yeah, because the tool knows for sure that this is a false positive. So it flags it as uh, ignore confidence. Okay. Okay, uh, something I don't get, sorry, but what, why is it reported in the first place? I mean, if the tool knows that it's something to be this probably word. also if the if you have like a separate ignore file for the tool right like with the container scanning and you want to ignore it yourself it may be reporting it as ignore i don't know um, yeah but that's, that's weird this, this uh, these are really not useful for severity this is what I, I was telling you that we are currently using the same set of values for both properties but some doesn't make sense so it's a, a technical um way to it to make it easier but uh, to me it doesn't make sense to provide those values at least it's not a big deal because here it's just uh, a list of possible values even if we don't have it it's not a big deal but for the filters it clearly doesn't make sense to have them for for severity anyway okay yeah whatever uh, I don't care. I, I mean, if you have a different text value in there, you may not get, I just have to think about, okay, if I get ignore and I don't have a style for ignore, like the red, green, whatever, you will just have it in a box and there will be the word ignore. So I have to have an else or default in the switch statement, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Maybe some tools have some, some kind of whitelisting or, you know, you can um, flag something, a vulnerability as a false positive. And in this case, it will still report that so that it's going to be displayed in a different yeah. way. Like we have the strike through, it's maybe that. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. If it's there, I will display it. Or Sam will display it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay, feedback. We have the feedback object. This is st still in discussion how we name that. Uh, 
to me, it won't be it won't be necessary to have JSON object, and unless you really ask for it, I wouldn't have it. We could have uh, an extra or metadata uh, field that will provide uh, type specific properties if we want to go that route, and it seems that this is what we want according to the recent discussion we have. So um, yeah, they just call it data. Meh. That's not nice. We, we, were, we were using extra in gymnasium. I don't know if, if it suits you, but. <laughs> I mean, it's not like it's eating up too much. It's too long. It's too long. You will have a nightmare uh, time uh, by uh, having short line in your code. <laughs> merge when pipeline succeeds. It's too long. Man, I don't know. We have so long names no. in our API. Yeah, but it's a, it's not a final property. It's an intermediary object, so you'd have to write that a lot of time to access the sub properties. Yeah, metadata is. Yeah, yeah let's go. I, I, with... I, I anyway. Okay. Sorry? Up to you. Okay, I don't care. Um. Okay. Um. Are we going with the get or with the post route? I mean, you're the, you're more you work longer in the security space. Do you think it's a a, a concern that's legit or? Meh. So Fabian agrees. <laughs> no. We have uh, approximately ten minutes left. Uh, there, the only the only concern that I have is the 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 sake of scalability because. I can see that being used later for the project dashboard as well. So it should, you know, be the same objects that we will have in the project dashboard and the, the, the group level dashboard and the instance level dashboard, just, you know, grouped uh, by different levels. So just want to make sure that we will be able to do that. And An instance, I'm not pretty sure because of the amount of uh, of, the, of the occurrences, but no, no, it's not it's just for eleven point five. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> no, this, this uh, I'm going to take instance. vacation in October. Uh, <laughs> um, um, no, you, mean, you see what I mean. We, we we should be able to aggregate things uh, as as we're going up or in the. Yeah, I mean, oh. I mean, if we go one level up here, you could also think add a thing like by group or something. And additionally, in that object, at a group object or something, I don't know. Um, um, really depends. Yeah. I mean, once we see real life examples and real life groups, we will know, have a better idea how to aggregate all the things on a instance level. Yeah. Um, for for example, my point is uh, here you have all the you you have the list of vulnerabilities, vuln one, vuln two, etc., and then you have a project object inside the vulnerability. Yeah. So you will enter that differently at the group level and at, no. the, at the project level. We can have the project ID always in the vulnerability or we can have a group per project. For each project, we have the list of vulnerabilities. No. I mean, oh, we I'm just fine with both. Just, no, no, just have the project in there. I mean, we have to have a flat array. Otherwise, you won't be able to store filter things like that easily. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, if, if you want a different approach, then it's a different endpoint and different yeah. JSON structure. Okay. Get or post. So upload, downvote. Who's for post? Uh, maybe we should ask other people and on backend side what's the best. But okay. according to the the fact that we will have more and more filters. I don't know, at some point, maybe, I don't remember how much is the limit for get requests, but it's very I, I, don't, I don't think we will, we will match, uh, we will uh, reach it, but. Okay. Cool. Good, I will write that down. Um, and, we, and we still have the, uh, to decide on the, the, like on the full path, Yeah. right? But you will find out the path. Uh, for the for the get, uh, it should be I think more about REST uh, style, so about 
specifying the resource we are getting. So maybe a more like uh, vulnerabilities because I'm, I'm pretty sure we won't want to expose things like as occurrences. Even if there are occurrences, I know that it's not a well appreciated word for user facing. Uh, so features. it would so, be like groups ID and then security uh, slash vulnerabilities. Probably something like that. Agreed. But that's for that one, right? Because that's the one where oh, yeah, we yeah, this yeah, one yeah. is so, the yeah, yeah. sorry. This is a. And should so, we have the summary after this or? Security slash dashboard, I think, would be great. Because slash currently. Dashboard. Uh, oh no! Yeah, this is, sorry. This is what we have for projects. We have project ID by project namespace slash security slash dashboard. So this would be okay. I didn't. It's good to me. Uh, yeah, I was about to suggest the exact same thing. So obviously, I agree. Okay. So the only open thing is get versus post. And I'm just going to form it nicely and put it in the issue. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So that was that was super productive. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we finally no got summer, and uh, yeah, we can get started on this. Um, yes. Any last comment? Any last objection? So the, the thing would be, are we going to create, now that we have the spec, are we going to create mock objects um, so that front end can work decoupled from the back end? Like, I mean, it doesn't have to be big, just like free, free issues or something. Um, Sounds like a good idea to me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, starting on I, Monday, uh, Sam will start working on that. So, um, yeah. So I really need to dig into that really soon. So provide uh, the full uh, vulnerability object. I mean, with all the top level properties because yeah. it's, it's missing uh, some um, properties like, I don't know, solution or identifiers, things like that. Yeah. So I need to do that today or maybe tomorrow to ensure Tham is Yeah, that, that will give you some, some space and, and time to do that until Monday. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I start tomorrow on the license management stuff. So um, okay. you have until, to, uh, have until Monday. Yeah. Can you just please add a note that this object is not the final structure yeah. in the issue? So that it's a to-do and ping yeah. there so that I can remember it. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do. And I think we will have the same meeting, Lucas, if you agree on the, the license management on Monday with Gilbert. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, that sounds really uh, necessary to make sure that we're all on the same page and this is really productive. I'm not sure yeah. we will have to spend one hour like this because this one is a really big subject compared to license management. Yeah. 13 minutes will be fine. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, just send me an uh, invite and uh, I'm going to write up a similar document then. Great, thank you very yeah. much. Okay, then um, have a nice day. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. See you in the Copernicus. Bye. Bye.